What is up, fellow geeks and repair enthusiasts? Welcome to another installment of Tech Depth Teardown. Today we're going to be doing a full teardown of the iPhone 14 Plus, and we're going to get right into it. Right off the bat, we're using our 1.5 millimeter star screwdriver to remove the two dockside pentalobe screws. We've got our heating mat set between 70 and 80 degrees Celsius, which is about where you want to be. Anything past that, and you risk damaging the phone. Whoops. That's what you gotta love about us here at Tech Depth. We show you the good with the bad. And if you're new to the channel, this is a series where we take apart pieces of tech start to finish, try to teach you a bit about the process and see if we can't pass down some of our knowledge base to you. If you've got any interest in taking things apart and seeing how they tick, follow along, drop a like, subscribe, and head on over to techdep.com for parts, tools, for your repair project, and so much else. We ship worldwide, one click, get them quick to your door. The unique feature about this iPhone 14 series, excluding the 14 Pro, is you can open the phone from the front and the back. You'll see here we are using the Curve Screen Disassembler, which is our tool of choice here at TechDep. This tool is generally reserved for iPads, but we like to use them for iPhones in our teardowns and repairs. That Super Retina screen is very prone to damage, and the pliability of the Curve Screen Disassembler is a must, in our opinion, to prevent cracking and damaging the screen. Of course, this phone, as you'll see, was already cracked, but those LCD screens are recyclable, so we want to be careful not to introduce further damage. Taking a look at that front screen, you'll see there are only two sensors, the proximity sensor, which is linked to the face ID sensor, and the digitizer LCD, and there's that cracked screen. Moving on to the back of the phone, in this model, Apple implemented hinges on that back glass. Rare to see Apple introduce a feature that makes repair easier and more efficient, but here we are previously to remove that back glass. You had to use a laser cutting machine. You can find videos of that process online. It's pretty interesting. And really the only difference between removing the front screen versus the back glass in this model is that the adhesive on the back is a bit weaker and requires less spudging to shake free, which is a bit strange considering that these phones are rated IP67. You might expect that the back would be stronger than the front, but in this case, it seems to be the opposite, and Apple's engineers know what they're doing, I'm sure. And you want to be mindful on this side, as this is where the NFC wireless tag is located. So this back glass is actually connected to the motherboard, and the only way to access the components is from the back. So unless you're doing a front screen repair, it's best to leave the front screen intact and access your repairs from this back panel. That includes charging port repairs, battery repairs, back camera replacement, front camera replacement as well. And as you can see, that back glass came out easily even though it was already cracked. Now we're going to be moving on to remove the tri-wing screws, the Torx screws, the Phillips screws. There's a lot of connectors because Apple uses that famous sandwich board ever since the iPhone X series, so we still see the same basic methodology since that iPhone X as far as teardowns and repairs are concerned. The GPS comes out easily. Next we have that front proximity sensor with the selfie camera and the face ID sensor. Next we'll be disconnecting the battery and even though you can see inside this is the spot for a physical SIM card, it's actually just an electronic SIM card reader so it's basically just a radio in a box and you can't put a SIM card inside. This is only true for the US model, for other countries the phone carries a different model number and you would be able to insert a SIM card. Moving on to the back camera of the iPhone 14 Plus, this is a similar design to the iPhone 14. And next we will be moving on to the screws for the charging dock, which consists of the loudspeaker, the Taptic engine, that remarkable little engine that gives your phone's vibrations such a distinct feel, and the charging flex just underneath. Taking out the screws for the top speaker, notably no longer embedded in that front screen, a feature instituted with the iPhone 13 where it's now within the frame itself. One thing to note is that this time around Apple used a mid-frame for the phone since it opens up from the front and back, so it's not a fully fledged frame. 
it's kind of a tongue twister. So there's less adhesive for the phones, even though it carries the same IP rating. I like watching that isopropyl dry up from the heat pad. I sped this clip up to 1500%. <laughs> to disconnect that battery from the mid housing, it is best to use the isopropyl alcohol 99%. Just let it warm for five to 10 minutes and it should pop out easily without giving you too much grief. And next we will be removing the loudspeaker with pin connectors at the bottom connected to the charging port. So there's that loudspeaker. Next we have the Taptic engine, followed by the eSIM reader, which again, no spot for an actual SIM card if you have a US model. And finally after that, we have the sandwich board with that A15 Bionic chip. And that is it. We are left with just a mid-frame housing and a charging port. So if you like this kind of content, please do give it a like, comment down below and let us know what kind of content you would like to see next. And if you have any need for repairs, parts, tools, head on over to techdep.com, see what we have for you over there. And until next time, hope you guys stay good.